Hi everybody, Wendy from Cinnamon Sweet Shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some dot painted cookies. It's really easy to do. It doesn't really require any kind of pastry bag or any kind of experience decorating cookies. It's perfect for beginners. First you're going to need some dotting tools. Now these are the dotting tools I use. I do have them listed on my Amazon site where you can purchase them yourself. They're very inexpensive. It's under $10 for the whole set and they last almost forever. They last a very long time. You could also make these cookies using a pastry bag, but I find using dotting tools is so much easier and it's so much quicker and it's a lot cleaner. No messy cleanup from pastry bag to pastry bag. I also have some of these little extra tools. This is a little spatula. Uh, this is a stylus, but I'm using it for the other end. It has a little bit of a scraper as well. This is just in case I mess up. I can scrape the icing off as much as I can and then just redo it. I also have a little spatula just to mix up the various icings. I have two paper towels, a damp one and a dry one. You'll need some really good royal icing. This is what makes those cookies look so great. It's the magic behind cookie decorating. First, you want to make sure you're using a royal icing that has meringue powder in it. I do have the recipe at my website, which I do have linked below. It's a good recipe to use. The reason why is you'll get a better, thicker consistency. Thicker but thinner, if that makes any sense. Probably doesn't but you'll get the better consistency. If you use a royal icing that uses egg whites, or if you use the vegan one that uses aquafaba, I find the icing is a little too creamy and it gets very, very runny. Your colors will run into one another, really won't look very nice. So make sure you follow a recipe that uses meringue powder. Again, I have it listed below. Another thing you wanna make sure is that the icing is of a good consistency. If it's too thick, you're gonna have points at the top of your dots. If it's too thin, it's gonna run. So what I do is I thin it out enough and I take one of the larger dotting tools and I'll take a smaller dotting tool and I will test it a few times on a piece of parchment paper just to see how the dots are. Better to start with it too thick than too thin. If it's too thick, you just add maybe one to two drops of water at a time stir it back up and then test it out again. Again, very important to have the icing at the correct consistency for these cookies to work. And of course you'll need some cookies, right? Makes sense. Now you can use any kind of cookie. This happens to be a sugar cookie that I'm using. You can use gingerbread cookies. You can use any store-bought cookie as well, like those little wafer cookies. Now what I did what, with this is I flooded these with black icing. Flooding means that you thin out the icing and you just coat the very top and let it dry completely. I let these dry overnight. You don't have to flood them. I do flood them because I find that the flooding, especially with the black icing in the background, makes the colors of the dots stand out even more so and it looks a lot nicer. Sometimes I flood them in other shades as well. But as I said, you don't have to. This cookie I made without any flooding and it still looks very, very nice. Now, it's kind of sloppy looking because I was in a hurry to get this done for you guys to see this. So my dots are a little bit not so perfect. But just goes to show as well with this, even if you make mistakes, which I always make mistakes on anything I dot paint, it still looks very nice. Now going back to the dotting tools, I do dot painting on non-edible items as well, like rocks and wood and clay plates. I have a whole separate different set of dotting tools for that purpose. So if you plan on doing this on non-edible items as well, make sure you don't use the same tools that you're sticking in acrylic paint or any other kind of chemical on your edible food. It's worth the money, it's very inexpensive. Just get a separate set of tools for this. What I did at first, because I'm gonna wanna line up a center dot in the center of this cookie. So here is the cookie cutter that I used when I cut the cookies out. Now as you can see, the cookie expanded slightly 
when it baked, but that's not a big deal. This isn't going to be 100% exact, and it really doesn't have to be. So I traced on parchment paper around the cookie cutter, and I folded it in half, folded it again, like so, and then I just snipped off the end. On each corner, I'm going to snip again. That way it'll just give me markings to do this. I hope you can see this right there and then right there and just wipe that off. Now when you open it up there's a hole in the center and a hole on the side. It'll give me a bit of a guideline. And with my stylus it's a pointy object but you could use a toothpick if you don't have something like this or, or a straight pin even. I'm just going to make a little bit of a mark in the center so that I know where it is. And on each end, I'm just going to have a little scrape here just to make a little mark, just to keep me on point with where I'm going to be. Okay, just wipe off the excess. There's one of the marks. There's one. Here's the center. Here's one. And here's one. As I said, it may not be perfect, but nobody's going to see a lot of the little mistakes. Just get some of these crumbs off of here. So for this, I'm going to be using some red icing, some yellow icing, and some white. It really doesn't take a lot of colors to mix. And, you know, this takes very, very little icing as well. So let's start with the red. And for the center, I want to use one of the larger dotting tools. So for this one, I think I'll use this size. And this is a good kit for starting. I do have other dotting tools that I use as well that are not round, they're flat. Just going to dip this in here and I want to make sure that that bottom is nice and covered. Holding this up, just going to from up and down, just dot it down. I have the one dot. Now, it looks a little small. I can just take it and dot it again, make it a little bit more, a little more icing in there, make it look a little fuller. And this dot, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, but as it sits, it's actually flattening. That's what you want to happen. You don't want to have the dot sticking straight up and drying that way. Now, with the wet paper towel, I'm going to wipe this off really, really well. You could even have a glass of water and just dip it in and then wipe it. And then I'm using the dry paper towel just to dry it off. It doesn't really need to be that dried very much. So in between, always cover your icing back up because this will dry very, very quickly. It sets and it dries and then you really can't re-wet it once that happens. Next I am going to take the white. Take these down. I'm going to use a smaller tip for this. Oops. So I'll be using one of these. And you could just decide what size tips to make on your own. And from here this is that first line, I'm going to just dot it down, make that a little fuller, so do it again, and then take it to the bottom directly underneath, again using that line as a guide, take it that way, turn it around using that line as a guide, this way, make that a little fuller, and then Again. Now this white icing could be a little thinner, so I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of water to this one. So now I did thin this out using the same dotting tool. Just dip it and just go in between each dot. Now this one's a little close, it is running a little bit, 
if you want it, you could fix that. I'm just going to let it be because when it's finished, it's not really going to look that terrible. Go back to the red. And with, with the same size dotting tool, I'm going to dip it back in. But this time, oops, that's a little too much. So I'm just going to start over. Okay. In between, a little above, but in between the white, I'm just going to put the red. And then wipe off this tail. Recover the red. I'm going to go back to the white. And I want to use a slightly, not even a slightly, about a few sizes bigger of a dotting tool. So we're going to try this one, just to make sure it's clean. Yep, we'll use this one. Take that, and I will place this in that little section above the smaller white. See how they have, there's a little bit of a gap in there, not covered real well. I'm just going to fill that back in by redotting it. So this next technique is called walking the dots. And I'm going to use red and, I'm, and a small, a smaller dotting tool. So we're going to start this way. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Again, making sure this is clean. So with this, I'm dipping this once. Going to put this on the top. Now without dipping this back in, I'm just going to walk these dots around as far as they go. Now that one's a little close together, not a big deal. So when you're going to do it again on the other side, you want to start at that same top dot to make sure that all of these dots are even. And that's what we call walking the dot. Look how much nicer that makes it. So I'm going to do it again for all of these. Okay. Make sure you dot this again. And they naturally get smaller in size as you go around to each one. You can see that's running into this a little bit. This is a very forgiving cookie decorating technique because they will still come out really, really nice even with some mistakes in it. Now with a larger tip tool, so I'm going to use this size tool, I'm going to take the red again and start at the top and then we're going to dot these up this way each one next one up there So using red, you take one of these larger ones, and bringing this right there. I'm going to take the white and I'm going to use this one just to go on the very top. I'm 
with the yellow. Just deciding which tool to use. I think I'll use this one. We're going to walk the dots again using a smaller point. Let's take that over, over, over. Take the white again, just to take it to the end a bit. Use another smaller dotting tool, just put a dot. Now you want to let this dry. We're not done with this. You could keep it, leave it as it is, but I'm not. But I want to let this dry for several hours for this to set. So I let this dry completely. And we're going to add some color on top of color. This just makes it look a little nicer. So I have my yellow. Use this size. And I just want to put this in the center. Take a smaller point and then add it to the top of the white. And with a smaller point, I'm going to add it to the smaller ones on top here. And this just adds a little extra dimension. As I said, you don't have to do this. Just think it looks a little prettier when you do this. So here's the cookie. Now, if you want, you could put some edging around the side with a pastry bag. Or you could just leave it the way it is and they look really pretty this way. Here's the finished cookie. I decided to add an extra yellow dot in between these white ones just to fill up the space a little bit more. And then I also made this cookie, which is a different design, and I added some blue to it. Very easy to make. The dotting tools are available at the link at my website and the link in the description box below this video. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel for so much more coming up and I'll see you all in my next video.